Hello. Thanks for dropping in. Here is another Commodore 64 that I'm going to unbox. I got it at the same time as the other one I opened a couple of days ago, and uh, I've never looked inside. At least I, I think it's a Commodore 64. It says it's a Commodore 64, but I've never opened the box. I just brought it in, set it down, carried on with other things. So here we go. It does say, ooh, it has a serial number on the outside. That's funny, it's got a little C at the end. I don't think I've ever seen that. But in a moment, we will see what lurks. I mean, in, okay, so I can tell her that this one has, at some point, been opened because of the dust cover. Aha, uh -huh. and there is no packaging. So there we have a brown dust cover. We also have a Commodore 64C system guide learning to program in BASIC 2.0. Also, we have some keyboard overlays Ooh. for a speed script, paperback slash pocket writer, and Paperclip 3. These were very handy. They were. I I didn't really use Superscript. I certainly did use Paperclip 3. And was quite fortunate to have met, in fact, the author, Stephen Douglas. So, in here, we have a Commodore 64. And definitely, ooh, it is... It looks very good. It has this extra Suncom mouse kind of joystick thing on it, which is not sticking so well. I don't want to hurt it though. Anyway, it's plugged into joystick port number one. Um, someone on my comment said you a way to see if something's been used if you really look and see if the areas between the ports are scratched up because a lot of people you know they just reach oh one thing I should test right away. Ah, oh, the power switch. It seems to be quite fine. Anyway, this little joystick thing is kinda cool. Kind of like a pre mouse thing, although they say it's not well, I mean who knows how long it's been on there and how long is it tape or is it velcro or oh it's Anyway, the machine looks dandy. There's something else in here. I don't know what it is, but I'll find out. Oh! Looky dokey. It. What's this called? By Novarone. It is a cartridge port expander. So you could have up to three cartridges. And there is a switch. One, two, three. And I would bet a reset switch. It has kind of a swoopy logo. It maybe is, in fact, the Novarone logo, but I seem to remember it somewhere. Not much in the way of any other documentation on here. Um, just the bag. And this fine thing. I have never had one of these in my hand. I've had other cartridge expanders. There were many of them. I've never seen this one. Let's see. What's in here? Oh my. Okay, the usual video cable. Still, I love these ends. Never used. This would have been the one you would have used for the RF modulator. In here, better working turbo load and save for the Commodore 64 and 128. Indeed, the machines were not fast. What is this? Super Explode version 5 with sc color screen dump. Press return after power up. Seems to have a reset switch and oh, an on off switch of sorts. Oh, yeah. The switch seems to work. I suspect 
this may have been used for nefarious purposes. What else lurks in here? The final cartridge. Buttons hmm. freeze. Reset. Interesting. Once again, something I've heard of, but I don't believe I've ever messed with. What else is in here? Video Fight 2. No service, no user serviceable parts. Huh. Well, that's game. Huh. I have never even heard of this. So definitely this machine is not um, brand new in the box. It has been used. Oh, there it is. Serial cable. What else is in here? Ah, a switch to go with the cable that we would hook up if you were going to use and the RF modulator. Once again, people think that this is an RF modulator. It's not. It's a switch. It's a switch. It's a switch. That's all it is. The RF modulator is inside. Anything else? Hmm, that seems to be it. Well, that's quite something still. I have no clue of what this might have at all. Well, I think I will I will put this cable in the cable pile. And this I'll put back in. Beautiful. Beautiful. And these things I will have to look up on search and see what I can find. Video Byte 2. Looks like it plugs in the user port and gives you an output. Somebody out there may know what these things do. Now I'm pondering. Do I put them back in the box? Uh, no, I do not. I'll put the other things back in. And no, that's enough of that. So this one is definitely not as new in the box as the other, but it certainly has some unmistakable goodies. Now, does the serial number match that? Is another question. And the answer is, yes it does. Oh, our Xbox. Go up there. Sit there. Does the machine work? Well, there was no power supply with it, but there was a power supply with the other 64 that I have unplugged, and there's also a video feed cable, which I have not unplugged. So, as delicately as possible, and of course, with great reverence, I will plug in this video cable. And I'll make sure the power switch is in the off position. I will rise just now. Oh. Plugging in the power supply. And I will tilt the machine because the power supply is still all wound up. So that I can actually plug it in, making sure the witness mark is up. There's nothing left to do but turn it on and hope. I hear something. I don't hear the usual squealing, but I hear something. Sometimes, of course, things wake up with a little power, but not this time, it seems. If you remember recently, I turned on a 1541 too, and it just sat there and spun at me. And of course, I always try to turn something on and off and just see if maybe a little power might do something good for it, and it never does, except in this case, the 1541 too. 
Well, it's starting to work. So, I will do that again with the 64. The power switch is dandy. The machine looks wonderful. But we are not getting anything on the screen. I should perhaps preserve these in... By the way, these are paper, which appears to have been laminated and cut out just so. Look at that. Right over the keyboard with tons of commands at your fingertips. No need, well, less need to read the manual. I think what I will do at this moment is ponder. I shall. This, of course, 64 is not working, so, but just to make sure that nothing else has gone astray, I will, with great care, set this, there's a big 20 over here, I'm going to set that up there, I'm going to put this book and dust cover, we'll put the dust cover up here. And maybe I can just tentatively put the book and stuff there. And I will grab the other 64C that I tested the other day that has the wonky power switch. Well, just to make sure that everything is fine with uh, this power supply and monitor combination, I will turn it on. The switch is still much the same. And there we have it. A Commodore 64, the final cartridge. I must look into these things. I must. If you know anything about the better working turbo, what I would say, well, that's probably just a fast loader. Super Explode version 5. Sounds intriguing. Video Byte 2. Interesting. And the final cartridge, as well as, of course, this fine piece of history. Three cartridges, one reset switch, one slidey. Of course, just in case you have not ever heard this, never take a cartridge in or out when the machine is turned on. Never, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, no way, no how, uh-uh. Bad things can happen. That's why this, um... This thing would have a reset switch, because if you have three of them in there, it's still probably best to turn the machine off in between. Um, but certainly, if you were to, I guess, press and maybe hold the reset switch and slide the slider, that would be okay, possibly. I don't know. What I've always heard is, don't do it. Don't pull the cartridge in and out. But using this thing... Switching the switch is not pulling it in and out, but certainly you would have to press the reset, or certainly it might get terribly confused. Well, so those are the two Commodore 64 C's that were in boxes. I'm just going oh, to like that power switch. Now, a fellow said to me, if I were to turn this over and look at it and see what I could see in terms of where the shielding was, I could probably tell, excuse this light here, whether this was a big board or a little board. And that I should, if it's a, if it's a bigger board, I should see shielding here and here. And if it's a smaller board, I should just see shielding here. And, indeed, I only see shielding here so one would think that this is, in fact, one of the 64Cs that had the small board with the Super PLA Super, ugh. which, of course, I don't like the Super PLA, oh, because you can't really do things. And anyway, I'm just going to look at this other one. Oh, look. The warranty sticker is still intact. This, too, would appear to have the small board. Because I can see shielding, no shielding. I can 
see the keyboard cable. There it is. The warranty t sticker is intact. Beautiful. And this cute little joystick, which I think was made popular by Geos, which, of course, if any of you have watched this before, I didn't like Geos. And why? Because it took a machine that I had known since, you know, almost the first days of its existence and turned it into this slow-moving stranger. Now, I did get a message from a fellow who said, well, you know, we had some pretty fine stuff in Geos, including desktop publishing and such, and he said that with the RAM expander, it moved along much better. Well, that is possibly true. I do not doubt it. I do not doubt that Geos had some good things about it. I just wasn't the person for it. Sort of like my grandfather was a tea taster, and people would say, well, what's the best tea? And he said, well, I can tell you what the best tea in the world is. But it doesn't mean you like it. As he always said, the best tea is the tea that you like the best. His name was Sidney Cannell, and he worked in the tea industry for 75 years. Started when he was 15, retired, finally, totally, completely, when he was 90. Anyway, so much like Geos, or like other things, I suppose it's an acquired taste. Which, in terms of food and other such things, means it really tastes awful, but you can get used to it, and maybe eventually come to appreciate it. Well, Geos and I never really got along. Maybe I should try to see how it would go, or how much better it might be with a RAM expander. Maybe. Um, who knows? We'll see. Stay tuned. Right now, I actually... It is the middle of the night, and I could not sleep. So I thought, well, I will come down and record and check out what's in this box. And I really thought I was going to find um, much the same as what was in this box, which is books and things and stuff. Now, there wasn't even a power supply in the second box, but, you know, there were other treasures. It's funny, as I look at this machine here... I notice, maybe it was just the, no, it looks a little, it's funny, the, the bottom case seems to be slightly darker than the top case, and some people would say, oh, well, you know, somebody has changed it, it's been altered, it's been checked, but, of course, the warranty sticker is still on it, and, um, from what I've heard in the, um, various talks by people at Commodore, sometimes the, uh, you know, whatever plastic they were mixing up just wasn't quite the same shade. That's just the way it was. So you get a machine brand new out of the box and say, huh, why well, I, I would bet you really can't tell. It's, it's very close. But it's not quite the same. This, the bottom, just looks to be a different U. Oh well. Anyway, cute little joystick. Nice thing about this joystick thingy, which was primarily used for GS, made by Suncom. The people who, wait for it, make this disc notcher. Suncom. Um, it has a pass-through, so that you can have this on here, glued on, stuck on, or whatever on. But it doesn't keep you from plugging in a joystick to play your favorite game or whatever else you might have in mind. Anyway, this machine, it also smells mighty fine. Now, it doesn't work yet. So this one, I'm pretty sure there is no way for me to preserve the warranty sticker. I will have to open it up and see what's what and hope, hope, hope. It is not the Super PLA, which is a 64-pin monster. Um, yeah, a monster. It's a monster. Monster. I don't like it. I like the old, early versions. 
Well, not, I just, this is the one, the small one. I just don't like the small one. Because the other ones, they're all, they all have their charm. They all have, you know, there could be different, more RAM chips, less RAM chips, and other such things. But basically, I guess it's kind of like working on an old Volkswagen Beetle or some modern diesel Volkswagen thing with all kinds of computers and stuff. And that is, uh, you know, the old, much like the Commodore 64 versus Geos, the, the Volkswagen is an old friend that, you know, you open up the back and you know what you're going to find. And when you open up one of these things, I mean, you know what you're going to find. But if the PL, Super PLA is bad, finding a socket is very difficult. And, oh, uh, it's, oh. Uh, I know, it saved money. I know. It's a beautiful, magical thing, and they probably worked endlessly on it. Um, anyway, I just don't like it. Anyway, but I'm open to be wrong, as maybe there's something really, really wonderful about it. I don't know. Anyway. So, two Commodore 64 C's with the stickers intact. One works, one doesn't. And... Some cool cartridges. So, oh, you know what? Another thing, this disc notcher. Somebody told me they are selling them online for like a hundred bucks. I I can't imagine this. I can't imagine. I must do research on this, but it is quite wonderful. Quite wonderful. Ugh. And they cut so perfectly. Get them lined up. Push it in, pop goes the weasel. Alright, oh, but well, you know what I can do now? I can take this dust cover, specifically made for a Commodore 64C, I would imagine. And I can, with great care, pull it over. Maybe what I need to do is put the back ends over first. Okay, that seems better. And pull it out the way over the front. Oh, well, that's pretty good. There. That's pretty snug, too. get to sleep. The morning will come. So, any questions, comments about all the magical things that I have found within this box, with, by the way, the matching serial number? But I didn't find any bill. And actually, let me just look here. Hang on one sec. Does this have a price sticker from Canadian Tire? It did not. It has a little blue sticker, but I can't make out what it says. And I like to say the box is, you know, not perfect, but not bad. Oh, okay. Well, I look forward to your comments and suggestions about what I might do with these magical cartridges. Certainly when I test them I could use this expansion device. I could. Alright, enough. Shaboom. Sleep. I must. Right, Penny? See? Mm, excuse me. Even Penny has gone to sleep. Well, thanks again for coming. Thanks for being here. Many, many more episodes of all kinds of things coming, including, of course, the investigation into what ails this pet, as well as the other one that I found in the box that looks so stunningly, brilliantly, gorgeously white and beautiful. It's beautiful. 
as well as other things. Yes, yes indeed. I have too much stuff. Oh well, these things happen. All right, so Penny does not seem to want to appear. Right, Penny? So, no CAT scan today. Sorry for the rambling, I'm getting tired. Thank you very much again. Bye for now, stay safe, and I hope when the next time you turn your 64 on, oh, oh, one more story, one more story. I got a message from a fellow, he turned on his pet, his 8032, and there was smoke. So it seems a capacitor has lost its capacity to be a capacitor. So at some point, we'll look at that. We'll work it out. He's going to probably drop it off or we'll meet somewhere and I'll have a look-see. And uh, I haven't done a whole lot of recapping yet. But maybe I will. Maybe I shall. Maybe I must. Because these capacitors, and I'm not talking about the little ones by all the chips, but the big ones. Um, you know, they go bad after 40, 45 years. Anyway, okay, enough.